All right. Hello, my name is Blake Elizalde, and I'm a member of the career team here at Gardner-Webb University. I serve as a career coach in our College of Business, so I help business students with resumes, internship, um, interview prep, um, really any career readiness assistance that they're in need of. And uh, today we're going to be talking about searching for jobs and more specifically the timeline for searching for jobs and kind of what to expect in the process. Um, and so we tell our students to expect this process to last about seven months. So from when you start searching for your job to submitting that application, to getting an interview, to getting a start date, um, this whole process should take about seven months. Um, luckily, we're out of the pandemic, no more COVID-19. And so there are plenty of jobs out there. Uh, there were some jobs that were cut. There were some jobs that were transitioned to fully remote. Um, and so you're going to see a lot of jobs like that when you're applying. You'll see some hybrid stuff. You'll see remote options. Um, but because we're out of the pandemic, there's a lot more jobs available now than there were maybe two years ago whenever COVID was, was a thing. Um, so don't be alarmed when you see hybrid or remote. That's just kind of the new norm. And um, a lot of times you'll also see a lot of offices doing two to three times a week in in office, and then the rest is at home working remote. So four fatal job search mistakes. Um, one of them, you waste time applying for jobs you're definitely not qualified for. So this is why it's so important to read the job description, go to the minimum requirements. And so in there, you'll a lot of times see uh, minimum education, minimum job skills, minimum years of experience. And so if you don't fit that, then you probably shouldn't be applying for that job just because you're probably not going to get it if you're, you know, freshly coming out of college and don't have any of that stuff. Um, so don't apply for those jobs because that's just a waste of your time. Um, you, another one, you don't keep track of your applications and send duplicate applications. Um, so this could be you're applying for this one accountant role. It sounds really great. Um, you don't write it down. You don't keep track of it. And then maybe a week and a half later, you see the same job and you don't remember that you applied for it. Um, so then you apply for it again. And this employer just received two applications from you at different dates. Um, and so it just looks like you don't, um, you aren't organized. It makes you seem sloppy. Um, so just keep track of your applications. And we'll kind of talk about how maybe to do that later on in the, the presentation. Another one is you don't customize your resume for each job. Um, this could be you just send one generic resume for each job application that you're that you're doing. Um, this is not a good idea just because you want to stand out. You want to um, kind of make the best impression with these employers. And so these employers are taking time to craft this job description. They're including keywords, uh, different skills. Um, and so you really want to kind of, when you're applying for a job, take some skills off of their description, put it in your resume and kind of match your resume to the job description. And you don't want to Again, just in a generic one because that makes you appear lazy. Um, another one is you don't follow up on your job applications. This could be you you just do it just to do it. You're not really taking time to to get it done. You're not making it personalized. You're um, you really need to focus on maximizing each application. And so you really need to stay open minded. Um, you're getting a degree and you need entry level experience. And so, again, a lot of these leadership roles, these managerial roles will require years of experience. Um, and so they have to, you have to get experience from these entry level jobs. You can't just go straight into a, a leadership role and expect to, to get it. You really need to kind of build up your resume, build up some some credibility and kind of work your way up. And so some job search tools, um, your resume, a big one, basically, um, you know, it's a professional description of who you are. So it'll have a career summary as well as your previous work experience. Um, your network is a big one. So the people you surround yourself with professionally, who all knows you, who do you know, um, that can kind of help you get plugged in somewhere. Um, interview, you know, practicing interviews, using inter interview resources that we have here at Gardner Web, such as Big Interview, um, such as mock interviews, things like that. You need to really work on your professional image as well. Clean up your social media. Make sure there's no pictures on there that you don't want employers to see. Um, you also need to create a professional sounding voicemail. 
Um, don't use the one that you had when you were 14 or 15. Um, you really want to create one that sounds like you now and that's professional sounding and um, leaves a good impression whenever these employers do call you to either you know schedule an interview or try to give you the job uh, start date. Uh, search resources, again, these are these are platforms like LinkedIn, Handshake, um, Glassdoor, Indeed, and we'll talk about some of those later on in this in this presentation. Um, you need to constantly continue to expand your network. Um, and so it's common for our students here at Gardner Web to find jobs through networking. 70% um, of jobs aren't listed on search platforms. So not listed on LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor. They're um, kind of just given through their network. 30 You'll see 30% of jobs just on search platforms. And so you really need to uh, really focus on your network. And you can do this by starting with your faculty. Uh, your faculty are a great way to expand this network. They know so many people. They've had contacts with um, many different students over the years, many different employers because of internships and things like that. Um, so really start with your faculty and ask, okay, who do I need to know? You need to connect with students and alumni. Um, you can do this at you know alumni events on campus. You could also just connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, alum hire alum. And so that's an important um, thing to think about whenever you are applying for jobs. If there is a Gardner Web alum that you know that works there, they could potentially put in a good word for you. You need to attend career fairs and networking events. Um, we do a lot of these in the College of Business as well as just campus-wide. Um, usually do a career and internship fair in the fall as well as in the spring. And so these are all important uh, events to go to. Again, already talked about LinkedIn, but LinkedIn is a great way to connect with different employers, different alum. Um, LinkedIn is basically a giant professional social media. And so um, it's really popular and is used all the time. Um, and tell everyone you know. And so if you're looking for a job, be sure to you know, let people know that you're looking. Um, you're, a lot of people, overlook this, but your hometown, all the people that you know back home, that's part of your network. Um, and they might know someone that knows someone that could potentially get you a job if they know that you're that you're looking. Again, spread the word through your network. You can send a mass email out, um, post on Facebook, shoot a LinkedIn message to your entire network to let them know you're searching. Um, and you really need to include like what you're kind of searching for. So include info on your position slash organization that you would prefer. Um, include what differentiates you from the competition, what makes you stand out. Um, you can ask for referrals or contacts in the industry or organization, ask if they know of positions in their own companies. And so a lot of times these people will um, have, a, have a better radar or a be better sense of what's open in their own company. And again, it might not be posted on LinkedIn. It might not be posted on uh, Glassdoor. They might know of a position that just opened and they can kind of direct you to the people that um, can hire you. Um, and so you may want to attach your resume when you're when you're doing all this. Um, but again, connect with recruiters on LinkedIn. That's a great way to um, spread the word. All right. So seven to eight months before graduation, you really need to be asking your questions, asking yourself this. Where do I want to be geographically? Do you want to be in Charlotte? Do you want to be in Nashville? Do you want to be um, back in your hometown? Where do you want to work? Um, and this is important because this kind of helps you narrow down the search, right? So there's tons of jobs available in the United States. If you just typed in marketing to a job search platform, tons of jobs are going to be listed. And so jobs from California are going to pop up. Jobs from Oregon are going to pop up. And so if you're not interested in living over there, then you want to get those jobs out of the search pool, I guess. Um, and so you really want to kind of focus on where do you want to work geographically? And then you can enter that into the search bar and it'll show just jobs that are in that area. So that just helps you narrow down the search process and see jobs that you are actually interested in. You need to figure out what industry or field you want to work in and what their timeline is. This is important just because if you're marketing, you don't want to probably search up accounting stuff. Or if you're in accounting, you don't want to probably search up um, international business because you want to you know, apply stuff that's going to fit you the best. Um, is there a specific company you're wanting to work for? So if you're interested in working for Bank of America or Wells Fargo, type that stuff in and you can potentially find jobs that are in those businesses. What style of work do you prefer? Do you prefer formal, casual? Are you, do you prefer being in the office or do you prefer working remotely? 
all of this is important. All of this is good to consider when you are um, beginning that job search process. Um, if you're interested in working for in Charlotte, what salary do you need to live in Charlotte? Um, you can find all this stuff just by Googling it. Um, it's good. There's tons of resources out there that will provide, okay, here's the median income on in Charlotte, North Carolina, or, or Nashville, Tennessee, or, or where, wherever. Um, are you qualified for the jobs that you're applying for? Um, who do you know of already doing what I would like to be doing? So this is um, this is where net, your network comes into play. So if you know someone that's doing something that you would like to be doing, ask them how, how their job is. Ask them what are some expectations that you can um, kind of expect from that job. Um, prep, practice, and polish using the right tools. And so um, that's where we come in. We offer a lot of great resources for students, um, whether it's resume workshops, whether it's networking events, whether it's mock interviews, because um, we're here to help you polish those, those skills. Um, so six months before graduation, um, this is where you're going to start searching and start applying. And often is in parentheses and it's in orange and it's, there's an exclamation port, uh, point there because it's so important. You need to do it um, very often. And so you need to get familiar with your industry's hiring cycle. Again, you can look this up on Google. You can reach out to a recruiter, get on the recruiter radar. Um, so when you're creating your LinkedIn, you have your LinkedIn, follow uh, myself, Blake Elizalde, follow Micah Martin and follow Bree Silvers. We all work in the Career Center. We're all connected with tons of recruiters. And so that's just a great way to get yourself on their radar. Um, network weekly using LinkedIn. Uh, this could be just, you know, posting on LinkedIn, responding to someone's LinkedIn post, uh, or connecting with someone and using a custom message to, to connect with them. So keep a log of where you are in the process with each position you have applied for. So if I've applied for three and I have an interview for this one, make sure to just you know keep a log of that. And again, we'll talk about that later on in this, in this presentation. Um, again, tell everyone you know that you're looking and set a weekly application goal and keep at it. And so if you're weekly application goal is three. If you want to apply for three jobs a week, do that every single week. Um, and yeah, you want to apply as much as possible. And so a lot of this job search is going to be virtual. Um, and so again, we've talked about some of those tools, but primary job search tools already online. So again, LinkedIn, Indeed, Glassdoor, a whole bunch of platforms that you can use to find jobs are online. Um, virtual applications and interviews, you'll probably, you know, submit an application and it'll ask you to type in basically your whole resume. And at the end of that, it'll also ask you to upload your resume. And so you just need to be, be prepared to, you know, to do that. Um, most of the time, your beginner interviews will also be on Zoom. And so you need to make sure you know how to use Zoom. Um, you need to master the technologies and practice. And again, you can practice with with your friends, you can practice by scheduling an appointment with us here at the Career Center. Um, you can network online. Again, this can be done on LinkedIn. Virtual job fairs, we've done a couple of those um, and they're pretty successful. We've had Garden Web students get hired from those. We've had Garden Web students get internships from those. Uh, we do those at Garden Web, we do in-person ones, um, but you can find virtual ones as well online. Um, there's also a national candidate pool um, so because there are so many remote jobs, you can work um, in California by living in North Carolina. Um, and so again, remote jobs are common now, so that's just something to consider. Um, you can showcase your skills through the process. And so when you are kind of applying for jobs and you can you know show skills that that make you stand out. So if the, if the employer is looking for AI skills or something, then you could probably showcase that in either your interview or um, through your, you know, your skill section on your resume um, and be intentional to stay on the radar. And so this could be, you know, following up with employers. This could be, um, you know, constantly contacting, or not constantly contacting, but, um, you know, staying on the recruiter's radar by liking their post on LinkedIn, by, by just adding these touch points in, in, the, in the process. So searching and applying, again, determine when and where uh, you want to intern or work at. Um, this is super important just because, again, it narrows down that, that list of jobs that pop up. Um, start with any leads your faculty provide. Um, so go to your faculty and ask them, hey, I'm interested in working in the accounting industry. Um, I wanna stay in Charlotte. 
Um, but do you have any contacts or do you, do you have any ideas on what I can do? And these, again, these faculty have been doing this for a long time. They've seen students come and go. They've had students do internships. And so they have a list of, of tons of resources that they could potentially give to you um, to help you kind of get started in the process. Um, so Handshake, use filters and in industry language. Again, LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed. Handshake is the number one platform that employers use to hire college students, freshly graduated college students. And so you have access to it for free. Uh, you can go on to Web Connect. There's a Handshake tab and you have access to it for free. And so definitely take advantage of that. Uh, the searching and applying is a two-way street. And so whenever you're looking for jobs, you want the most descriptive job description. You want um, the best amount of information so you can make the best decision on whether or not to accept or just even to apply. And so employers want the same from you. They want you to maximize your profiles. They want you to fill out every possible detail you can on your LinkedIn profile, on your Glassdoor, on your Indeed profile, just so, just so they know who they're getting. Um, and so that's very important just so you can stay on, on the radar and pop up on certain things that they put into the search bar in the search bar. Uh, use appropriate keywords when you search. You want to, if you're interested again in accounting or marketing, just you know, type in those words. Um, and we have a full list of job search sites on our Center for Personal and Professional Development uh, website. And so these are just some uh, platforms that we've kind of already talked about. Um, this is from Handshake. And so again, here you can type in or select if you want to do a job or an internship, or if you're looking for volunteer work, or if you're doing, if you're wanting to do full-time or part-time, there's tons of um, filters that you can use to kind of really customize this whole job search process for yourself. Uh, keyword search tips, know what you're looking for. Start with the ideal job title. Um, so if you're looking for a marketing role, you can maybe type in social media or you can type in, um, you know, marketing, you can type in uh, promotional, you can type in a whole bunch of things that might mean the same thing, um, but that just help pop up, help more jobs pop up for you. So know the terms most used to describe the attendant job, uh, find people on LinkedIn in these roles and connect. So if you're looking for uh, a marketing role and you know a great person that's in this role already, connect with them on LinkedIn maybe ask them a question about the role, ask what's expected. Really, that's what the LinkedIn is for, to connect with these different employers, to connect with these different um, employees too. What jobs are associated with your major? Um, so if you're an international business major and you have no idea what job you want to do with that, ask your faculty, ask what, what students have done in the past, ask um, kind of what's, what's out there for your major. Um, look up alumni position titles, Interview people doing what you want to be doing. Um, how did they find their jobs? Stay on their radar. And so if you're talking with these people, ask them these questions and stay on their radar. So again, narrow your search location, um, your field or industry, specific companies, generic titles such as coordinator, associate manager, director. Just you know, look those up and see what pops up in your, in your area. Um, industry specific skills, tool, tools and jargon. Um, look up words that uh, are associated with accounting. Look up words that are associated with um, cybersecurity, if that's if that's your uh, field, and see just what pops up so you can use some of those words to kind of put into the search bars. So use words like assistant, entry level, full-time, part-time, contract, freelance, remote. And all of these words is narrowing down your search so that more options pop up that are more tailored to what you're looking for. Um, again, you want to apply for things that you really want to apply for. You don't want to waste time applying things, applying for things that you're not qualified for or that you're not really interested in. Um, and so look up specific skills, qualifications associated with whatever career you're looking for. Um, and you can all you can use that to narrow your search. So again, if you're looking for an internship or even a job, Handshake is a great resource and platform for you to use. Um, I think there's 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 tons of employers that are on on Handshake, um, and so definitely take advantage of that. You are paying for it with with your money, and so it's important for you to use that just because it's such a great resource um, to use Handshake. LinkedIn's a, a big one. Um, let recruiters recruiters know that you are searching for jobs. 
Um, and so if you go into your profile, there is a button that says, let recruiters know you're open. And if you click that, it allows employers to see, okay, this person is searching for a job. This person is interested in whatever industry. Um, a lot of times people will um, do the kind of now looking or job searching on their profile. There's like a green ring that you can put onto your profile picture. Um, and we encourage students not to do that just because it just screams that you're not, you don't really have a job right now or, um, and unemployed people are kind of hard to employ. And so we kind of encourage our students to kind of steer away from, from doing that and just doing this right here. So career interests, let recruiters know you're open, click on. Um, let's see. And you can also include like where you are in your job search, uh, when you like to start a new job, all that into that. And it'll allow employers to see that, say, okay, I can hire this person here. This is what they're, this is what they're looking for. Um, get job alerts. You can customize this on your phone, your email. Um, it'll send you notifications when there is a job that's available that matches your profile. Um, and so definitely check your email every day. We we see a trend for some reason that students don't check their emails. And I don't know why. Um, it's very important. It's a good habit just because whenever you are working, there's going to be tons of work emails that you get that you're going to need to respond to quickly. And so it's important to check your email. But also, you don't want to miss out if an employer is reaching out to you with a job or um if there is a new job posting and it's really good that matches you, but so many people have already applied and they they shut it down. So again, follow industries, follow companies, follow people. Um, if you're in the banking industry, follow as many banking people as you can, um, just so again, you're on their radar, but also you can see what the trends are in the, in the industry. LinkedIn is a great way. Um, it's great because it does that. It not only shows you different posts, but it also has articles, has workshops and things like that um, that you can do to um, just learn the most about your industry. And so if you're looking for an internship abroad or if, you, if you're looking for a job abroad, then you, you can use Going Global. And so that's another resource that we have here at Gardner Web for our students. Um, if you're interested in working in South America somewhere or, or we'll, we'll, we'll make it specific. If you're interested in working in Brazil, and you're wanting to be a social media marketing coordinator or whatever, um, you can type in Brazil, you can type in social media, and jobs will pop up that um, fit that description. And so that's another great resource for, for our students, but specifically for our international students who are looking for jobs here in the United States, and they're looking for a company to sponsor them. That's a great resource to, to use for that. Okay, so now we're three months before graduation. Uh, this is when you'll probably start interviewing. And so um, you'll start interviewing. It could be over phone. It could be virtual. Again, a lot of these first interview stages will be over Zoom, will be virtual, um, just because they have many candidates that they don't want to you know, bring to their, their, their job site. And so it's easier just to Zoom. And then they'll narrow it down maybe to two or three candidates and bring those three candidates to their job site and do a in-person interview. Um, so practice and prepare. Use Big Interview. Big Interview is this really cool AI job interview software that it'll you know ask you questions related to whatever field that you're applying for, and uses AI to kind of scan your body language. So it says how many times it gives you feedback on how many times you used um or if you were if you maintained eye contact the entire time, or if you were doing weird things with your hands, or it gives you really great feedback um, using artificial intelligence, which is really cool. Um, you can interview with your friends, so get feedback from them, but you can also schedule an appointment with us here at the Career Center just to do a mock interview or um, um, just practice, yeah, practice, practice interviewing. So you need to practice. Um, one of my friends, he just graduated from Gardner-Webb, he did applied for a lot of jobs and used those to practice interviewing. And so he was qualified for all the jobs. He um, was really interested in working at those jobs. And he just used, he used mock interviews. He used big interview, but then he also used in-person interviews to, to help him, you know, key in on his skills with, with interviewing. And so after the interview, you really want to send uh, a thank you email or, you know, a written note. Usually people send a thank you email. Um, this helps you just stand out in the process. Um, it's, also, it's also just a courteous thing. 
um, you're thanking them for taking time out of their day to, to interview you. Um, and so you, again, want to you know thank them and stay on their radar um, and then complete any next steps as directed. So if they said, we need you to do this, make sure you, you do that. Um, don't accept anything hastily. You want to, if they, if they do offer you something, um, ask for a couple of days just to review everything, ask any questions, ask questions about salary, um, ask questions about dress code, things like that, just so you can have the full, the best picture of what you're going to be accepting. If you do accept it, um, submit any references that they ask for. Um, if you haven't heard anything back, um, you need to inquire one week later, um, just you need to do weekly stuff, weekly touch points. And so if you interview um, one week, the next week, if you don't hear back, reach back out, say, hey, um, really enjoyed interviewing. Is there anything else that you need from me? And if you don't hear back that week, the next week you follow up, hey, just following up, just want to make sure I have everything submitted. Is there anything else that you need from me? Um, again, these are just touch points to help you stand out on the radar. And it makes you just seem like you want the, want the job and that you're really interested in working for that company and employers like that. Um, so ask for feedback and timeline, um, plan for the next interview. If they're, if they need another interview, you can plan for that. Or if you're not hearing back from them and there's another job that's interested in interviewing with you, plan for that one as well. Um, keep applying, keep interviewing. Um, in this whole process, you really just want to keep applying and keep interviewing. There's tons of jobs out there, tons of opportunities, and you don't want to miss out on anything. Uh, so again, follow up appro appropriately, DM on LinkedIn, email questions. Um, you can share an article, two-week interval intervals, stay on the radar, don't annoy them. Um, you don't want to be the person that reaches out every day. Hey, did I get the job? Hey, did I get the job? Hey, did I get the job? There's an appropriate way to do that um, where you don't where you don't annoy them. And again, keep searching and keep applying. And so the job search process is search, apply, follow up, repeat. Search, apply, follow up, repeat. And then when you do get that interview, you search, apply, interview, follow up, repeat. Um, and when you do that repeatedly, you'll get hired. So again, we talked a little bit about organizing your job search, track your progress and monitor your status. So you can do this by using a spreadsheet or notebook um, you can list position details and when you applied, um, include contact info just so it's easier that, so it's all in one place. Um, you need to note actions, communication and dates. So write, jot down stuff. If you need to submit a reference to this, this employer, or if you need to, um, interview for this job, make sure you're writing all this down and include dates just so you don't forget. Um, some search sites provide this feature. So some search sites will keep a list for you. Um, which is really cool, but make sure you're keeping track of all your stuff and you want to update this weekly. And again, follow up every one week to two weeks. And so there are emotional stages of the job search. And so first you could be very excited. You know, you're fresh out of college or after four years, you're ready to start this new chapter and then overwhelmed by just how many opportunities there are. Um, you find the right job and you're obsessed. You're like, oh my gosh, this is it. Um, frustrated because either they haven't gotten back to you or just the application is really difficult. Um, invisible, you've applied to so many different jobs and haven't heard back. Hopeful, um, because they finally reach back out to you and then you interview and then it takes them a while to get back out to you. So you're impatient, but then you finally get the job and then you're ecstatic. And so this is completely normal. There's a whole emotional kind of roller coaster with, with job searching and that's perfectly normal. Um, and so, again, before you accept a position, make sure you understand all responsibilities, expectations, again, dress code, salary, supervision, um, and make sure you have all these writing just so you can refer back to it if there's some misunderstanding that pops up. Um, have a clear understanding of your salary, net income, the pay cycle, and benefits package. And we do workshops on, on credit scores. We do rec uh, workshops on just understanding the company ben benefits. Um, and so definitely take a look at at the resources that we offer. Um, and a good, good resource too to use is your parents. Ask them about the compensation packages and, and all that stuff. Um, make sure your monthly income will cover your living expenses. We had uh, one student a few years ago who was just really excited about accepting a job offer and she didn't really ask about the salary. And she went back and asked about the salary and she was really excited about the salary, but the salary wasn't really that that high to be living in the area that she wanted to live in. 
Um, and so definitely make sure that the the salary is where you need it to be to live off monthly to live off, uh, but also make sure it it matches the the average salary for that location that you can really um, you know survive. And so get answers to every question you have. If there's any question that you have, make sure that you contact HR or make sure you um, ask the employer directly just to have a complete 100% understanding of what you're about to um, accept. And so this is an old slide, but internship, internship and career fair, we do these, we do about two a year. So um, there's one in the spring, one in the fall. Um, and this is a chance where we invite 100 plus employers to come to campus to hire Gardner Web Talent. So definitely come to these events, bring copies of your resume and um, yeah, bring copies of your resume and get hired. And so if you have any other questions or need assistance um, with any career readiness stuff, uh, whether it's resumes, interview prep, job and internship search, you can uh, schedule an appointment on Handshake. Uh, but you could also reach out to career at gardner-web.edu and schedule an appointment with us. Um, but, but yeah. Thanks so much, guys.